Hey, what's happening, everybody? It is Thursday night. Time for another episode of Thrifty Business. I'm your one host, Jason Thrifts. And hmm, where is my co-host? Let me see where she's at. Hi, this is Debbie, your co-host for tonight. Coming to you from Pacifica Beach, California. San Francisco's just over the hill. And over behind me, we have a Taco Bell that serves cocktails on the beach. Thanks for joining us tonight. <laughs> oh no, Debbie was doing afternoon cocktails on the beach. Are we in trouble? <laughs> no, actually, I didn't have one. Yeah, I have my cocktail right here. How you doing, Debs? Yeah, yeah. let's uh, let's jump right into our first segment so we can introduce our guest and uh, we'll talk about what we are drinking. <laughs> Now it's time for Jay's Tiki Talk. Each week, I drink a different rum out of a different tiki mug and try and match it up to my guest. Hello, everybody. And tonight, our guest is Dingo588, or Dustin. And we will talk about why he calls himself Dingo and all his stuff. But we'll do that in a little bit. How are you, Dustin? I'm good. How are you guys? Hi, we, Dustin. We Hi. are dandy. Now, uh, Dustin and I have been chatting uh, off and on this week. And Dustin lives in San Francisco. And he doesn't really know anything about tiki mugs, so I thought I would break out the the ultimate tiki mug. This is the first ever tiki mug, and it was a bar called Tiki Bob's in San Francisco. I looked it up. It's about three miles from where you live. Now, the bar is long gone, but the pillar that holds the corner of the building up is still there, and they just repainted it the old school colors. It was a mint chocolate chip green for a while, and some of my tiki friends... I got permission from the building owner to paint it back to this. So I was going to drink out of this tonight, and then I found a hairline crack. I wasn't sure if it was going to hold up. No. So I decided to drink out of his um, redneck brother. This is called Party Bob. <laughs> Party Bob. I love the team. Yeah. But, but I wanted to share this. I'm going to show something else. But let's see. Uh, Deb, what are you drinking out of tonight? I am drinking out of a Pacific <laughs> Panama City Beach, Florida, Chica Tica. And I didn't even know it was from a beach. So this is on the other end of the, the world. The yeah, other no side. kidding. Oh, and uh, I match up my rum. Dustin tends to find a lot of good bounty. So I figured tonight bounty rum was the way to go. <laughs> All right, Dustin, you got, a, you got a tiki mug there? I saw something a little bit different. I, I don't have a tiki mug. I do have a shot of espresso, though. <laughs> All right. Close enough. <laughs> All right. So before we get into our normal, I wanted to drop a little bonus tiki knowledge. So Dustin, you live one and a half blocks from this bar. Have you ever been there? Yes. Oh my gosh. I, but here's the thing. I like literally just discovered this bar existed like maybe a month before the pandemic happened and everything okay. happened down. And I was obsessed with it because it's just like, it's crazily decorated and they have all kinds of really cool old airplane stuff. So I'm like, I was I went like several times in a week once. So yeah, so this is a tiki bar, but they went from the for the explore end. So all the seats of the bar are from airplanes. It's like it's a it's like kind of like um, Indiana Jones. It's like a plane crashed in the in the jungle. Yeah. So that that's right next to your house. It's literally like a block away. Yep. I know where you live. We tried to get in last rights and we couldn't get a parking spot. So we oh, went home. Yeah, good luck parking over there. All right. So just to show you guys what Tiki Bob is worth, if you find him, here is the one I'm holding. $401. Just sold a couple days ago. And I want to share a modern one too. So this is actually my friend's listing. He luckily him and I were chatting because he goes, Yeah, I'm gonna sell this set for $250. I'm like, don't you dare. That set is worth well more than $250. And he listed it at nine ninety five and took a best offer of eight hundred and fifty dollars. So uh, make sure if you're going to sell tiki mugs, you reach out to me. I don't want no one selling something for two fifty that's worth eight fifty. Did you get a commission? <laughs> no. Oh, actually, actually, he did say he has something for me. So and he makes mugs. So I kind of have an idea what might be coming my way. Cool. So uh, I didn't ask for anything, though. I, I'm, I'm happy to help without any commission. But hey, if you want to send me a present, I'm not going to be mad. All right. So the last thing I wanted to, to uh, uh, share with you, Dustin, is this. Uh, I want to show you a vintage mug that's worth a lot. This is the drum mug from the Mai Kai, which is in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It's been there for about 60 years, still in existence. This sold uh, three weeks ago for $650. And... And I have the exact one sitting right here that oh I just listed on eBay and Etsy this week. 
Now, normally, normally, uh, we say goodbye to our guests, and then Debbie and I do our segments, and then obviously come back to the guests. But I want him to see something. Now it's time for our scores of the week. These are the items that you should be on the lookout for when you're out thrifting. So through a weird chain of events, this sold three minutes before we went live. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> and I was complaining. Wait till you see Dustin's scores. He has some amazing scores. I'm like, I didn't have any good scores this week. And then three minutes before I get Dustin in here, I sold this. So, yeah. Tiki mugs, keep your eyes peeled, kids. <laughs> Yep. So, so obviously it's being shipped out tomorrow and I'll be very gingerly with it the rest of the day now. No promoing that. No. So yeah, so there we go. I sold for almost $600, a little bit less than the other one, but I had a nice conversation with the potential buyer and uh, I probably have a new customer and maybe a new friend now that we've had these chats. So I don't mind going a little less. It doesn't bother me one bit. So good idea. So sit back, relax. We're going to talk to Justin about a uh, uh, Dustin. I'm sorry. Justin's my brother. We're going to talk to Justin about haunted uh, estate sales and creepy clown lamps and all kinds of fun stuff. So stay tuned. Thanks, Dustin. We'll see you in a little bit. Hey guys. All right. So now that I've uh, ruined it with the big uh, score, usually, usually we build up. This time we're going to go the other way. <laughs> it worked. Uh, so, uh, you know, I haven't sold a big bra in a while and this one isn't all that big and, uh, Dustin specializes in a lot of antiques. So he's probably shocked right now that used bras are a thing, but yes, I sell a lot of used bras so much so that I was at an estate sale once and I didn't know it, that anyone recognized me. And a dude walked up to me and whispered in my ear, there's no large bras. I already checked. <laughs> Jeez. I'm known for something, but, but I paid two bucks for this sold for $23 plus shipping. Nice. And then this one I want to share again, not a huge sale, $21 for a used t-shirt, but I got this t-shirt because the waiter at Duke's spilled my mimosa in my lap. Oh so my as an apology, they gave me, I think they gave us some mimosas for free and the t-shirt and I just sold the t-shirt. So basically I took $21 off of my brunch bill that morning. So, and the thing is, you got to be sourcing everywhere. I, I, I took my freebie, made money. And Stacy, my lovely wife, found this Anushka uh, purse in the savers, hanging in the regular section, not in behind the counter in the fancy section. It was $5. I was with you. Were you with us? Yes, we were with you when you, she bought that. Yep. So there we go. How weird that you're the co-host this week and that was one of the sales. If you're not familiar with Anushka, get familiar. It's hand-painted leather, always signed, as you can see right there. So, uh, and all the Nushka stuff does well. This 80 bucks is nice, but there's some that sell for three, four, five hundred dollars Wow. And that is used. Oh, and I want to share this record simply because in my teachings, uh, I talk about obis. Obis are the strip that goes around the record or the CD when it's an import from Japan. Oddly enough, this isn't an import, but they put an obi around the record just to add to the weirdness of this, uh, the Awakening Eternal Blizzard. I think it's a death metal band. I don't know. But it was on Blizzard white vinyl, and I paid five bucks and sold for almost $60, so... Just nice. want to just want to share that sometimes OBs aren't from imports. Nice. Oh, okay, my turn. Levi's. We sold these for forty nine ninety nine. I'm pretty sure we got them in the bins for about a dollar twenty nine. So, and my husband's become really good at recognizing uh, Levi's, how to list them, what they are. He looks at for the zipper for the word talent, and um, so he's my Levi guy. Nice job, and Levi's are so easy to ship too. Uh, you might have heard me talk about our stack of Dungeons and Dragons that we picked up. Our when our thrift store opened, the first day everything was half off, and I scored. I probably bought forty Dungeons, and, and Jason even had me lay them all out so he could see a picture. So yeah. we sold this one for eighty four dollars. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big I, old Dungeons and Dragons nerd from way back. I paid four dollars for that book. Nice. So my husband found these in our thrift store. They have the vintage section, the you know the more expensive little section, and he bought these for twelve dollars and sold them for seventy five, and they actually went to a sports store or something. You know that gut feeling, like oh my gosh, she's gonna sell these one by one and make a bunch of money. But hey, we went from twelve to seventy eight, so we're happy. Hey, heck yeah, I like it, and easy to ship, nice and tiny. Yes. Um, this guy's kind of cute. He hung around for a while. Glass bake, coffee mug, sold for $24.99, paid 99 cents for it. So I would recommend, though, this would pop so nicely on a black background. You're right. 
that. I think it was listed for about three years. <laughs> oh, yeah, because I'm like, this is a great little mug. But, you know, and most of us right now are watching on a monitor or a TV. Right. People on their phone, this would just disappear. You, you really you really wouldn't see it all that much. Or a red background to pop the, the logo. Yeah, that too. But sometimes red changes your color. That's right. Now it's time for CD and Cassette Scores of the Week. And as always, we start out with flipping cassettes first. Who's got a cassette? Debbie's got a cassette. Yay! Eric Burden War sold it for $17.99, paid 99 cents. Sometimes it seems like I'm never going to find any that are worth, but I do, so it keeps me looking. Nice job, Deb. Thank you. I got two good ones. Uh, uh, ZZ Top, Triple uh, X. Uh, just about the same as yours, but my better one is... Now, look, you're not flipping music yet. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Because let me tell you, someone in this world needed used Marilyn Manson on cassette for $30 this week. So I paid 4 bucks and I turned it into $30. Come on now. You got to start looking. There's so much money to be made. And again, you know, shipping this is going to be a little bit of work. Shipping a cassette doesn't take no time at all. That's right. And now from flipping cassettes to flipping CDs. All right. Now, uh, usually you're seeing me share $100 CDs. And uh, sadly, this is the first week in two and a half months I didn't have a $100 CD. But I got some other cool stuff to share. I sold this Guns N' Roses Use Your Illusion 2, which is not rare, for $16. But I wanted to share it with you because if you look at this one, Here's someone who sold one and two for only 10 bucks or is asking 10 bucks. Uh, but mine was sealed. And if you've taken my courses, I taught you all about the hype sticker. This one had a hype sticker. And I thought, you know what? I can bet you I can get anywhere from 15 to 20 bucks, even though it's old and common because it is sealed with a hype sticker. And I was right. I got 16 bucks. I bought it for $2 at a secondhand store. Nice job, expert. Uh, and then so very weird. You know, it's all about timing. This Malcolm X CD that I paid five bucks for and sold it for $24 has been listed in my Amazon store since January. Now this past Saturday night, my friend John and I, a black man and a white man sat down to talk about race and racism, what's happening in our world. And we talked on YouTube for about two hours and guess what? It sold after that. So oh, it's wow. like the universe said, hello, because it's been there for five months and it sold the, the, uh, the morning after John and I did this talk. So, uh, you know, if you want to see a, a frank and honest discussion, please check this out. It's on my YouTube channel. Uh, we did it last Saturday. I got a lot of great feedback from my white friends who had really never talked to anybody in depth uh, that was a black man or a black woman. And to hear John's side, they really opened their eyes. So please, if you got a chance, it is an hour and 45 minutes, but it's very thought provoking and hopefully will uh, help you understand some of the things that are happening right now. I wasn't going to watch it, but I did, and I'm glad I did, and I want to have John come back on, and you guys do this again. Cool. I would love to do it again with John. All right, this was from that same place. I got the Guns N' Roses, two bucks at a secondhand store. Janet Jackson remixes. This was a little promo thing. Wasn't ever for sale. Got 30 bucks for it, and I think I got one more. Yep. This is Insane Clown Posse. Now, here's the bummer on this one. This came, there was two CDs housed in this cardboard box. The CDs and the jewel cases were mint, but as you can see, this box is scuffed up. So I couldn't list it as like new, unfortunately, because there's nothing to do about the cardboard. So I did have to list it as very good, but I did describe it. I said, discs are mint, case is scuffed. Now, if you have not learned about flipping CDs yet, I have all kinds of courses for you. Flipping CDs, one, two, flipping cassettes, flipping Christmas music over at flippingcds.com. And the price is going up in like two weeks to where it should be. We've had it really low for a long time. So get over there and get signed up. But you know what, Deb? I haven't given away a flipping CDs in a long time. So, so, so let's go back to the last thing I just shared with you. Whoops, not that. Uh, there we go. Okay. If you've not taken my course, if you've taken my courses, please don't answer because let's give it to someone who hasn't taken the courses and I can give you flipping CDs, one, two, or cassettes. All right. Tell me the names of the two members of Insane Clown Posse. What? And I don't mean their real Jason Smith, Debbie Weeder names. I mean their rap names. So what are the two names of the Insane Clown Posse? Please only answer if you have never taken my courses. I can do that. Now, I don't think many of the people watching live know, 
but it's going to be who can Google fastest. That's what I was going to say. Get those Google fingers going. Who can Google fastest? And I will send you uh, a freebie of any of the courses. But the rest of you get over to flippincds.com and get signed up now. Uh, funny guess, floppy and stoner, but not correct. Good try. <laughs> Good try. <laughs> Sounds like something I would come up with. Yep. Oh, here we go. I'll keep this up on the screen. Maybe. There it is. Woo. Yeah. You always way over deliver on your courses. I mean, one, I'm not sure what the price is right now, but you buy it, you get one CD, you'll get your money. All right. Robert hit it first. Shaggy Two Dope and Violent J. Very good, Robert. Nice. All right. All right, Robert, hit me up. Uh, send me a message on Facebook, and I will make sure you're taken care of. So get get over to flippincds.com, get signed up, and get ready to learn. Whoops. Whoops. I jumped ahead here. But wait, there's more. Hold up. <laughs> it's time for Stacy's Budget Bin Scores. <laughs> I got the wrong picture up here. I don't have what it sold for. I totally realized I never edited it properly. Well, anyway, I'll tell you what it sold for because I know. But this is a CD of all theremin music. And my assistant had no idea what a theremin is. So I introduced her to theremin music the other day. Uh, and uh, this is Waves in the Ether. Stacy picked it up out of the budget bin for $1.99. And we sold it for $25. So good job, honey, as always. She's my girlfriend crush. <laughs> now it's time for our duds of the week do not let our mistakes be yours all right not everything is a winner this thing has been sitting for since 2016 <laughs> no one's giving me any offers on pull it everything it down pull it down <laughs> I was just every time my daughter goes, hey, mom, you got an uh, ugly Christmas sweater for a party I pull out? She goes, ew, not that one. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I need to put it like $12 or something. Or somebody wants to send me a best offer because it's got to go. I hope I can still find it. <laughs> pull it down. And these books, oh, my gosh. I thought these would sell fabulously. I bought them in a library book sell for five bucks. I listed them over and over for like four years. And I finally took a best offer. I think I took a best offer of $20 on these books. I mean, they're uh, little kids, hardback, weekly reader, classic stories. But for some reason, they just were not going to find a buyer till finally they're gone. All right. So a buddy of mine said, for the record, I won. Uh, so I'm actually broadcasting on three places at once right now, just as a heads up to everybody. So you might be on the place where it looks like you won, but I'm looking at the order in the chat that I see, which is through the feed of running the show. So I do go by who, who came up first. So just want to let everybody know. All right. Now, I usually share two duds like Debbie did, but I'm going to share one dud tonight because I actually made a mistake, and then I heightened the mistake, and then I fixed the mistake. So here's why this is a dud, Deb. I got rid of my DVDs because I needed more shelves for my Tiki mugs, and I sold this unknown Marx Brothers DVD for $17. Now, the um, the when when the person made the offer, they said, movie length must be 126 or 120 minutes long. Please load and test length before shipping. The short length version has no value to me. If the product is a short length version, please cancel. So, Deb, I popped it in, and he says 120 or 126 minutes. So, there it is. But here's the problem. I misread it. That is one hour and 25 minutes. For whatever reason, in my brain, I read that as 126 minutes. So, I'm like, oh, it's the right one. I, so, I do, too. <laughs> so, of course, he gets it and is very unhappy. I told you to put it in, and... I looked at this graphic, still didn't click in my brain, and I sent a message. I wasn't mean. I go, I did exactly as you asked. I sent you the two-hour version. And the second, Debbie, I hit send, I went, holy crap, that's an hour and 25. That's not 125 that's minutes. That's about 85 minutes, right? So I immediately replied again. I said, I am so sorry. Here's what my dumb brain did, and I am happy to pay for the return and refund all your money. So he's doing that. But it's a dud because... I messed up, but but once you mess up with a customer, quick as you can own it, it will help out. Now, why did you just not give him his money back? Say, just keep it. He didn't want it. I'll resell it. I mean, I'm going to oh, pay okay. for the return anyway. You know, he okay. already owned it on VHS, the short version. He wanted the long on DVD. Good customer service. Yep. Yep. All right. Now it's time for. <laughs> now it's 
time for closing. Now it's time for where in the world did our stuff go? If you are not shipping internationally, you are leaving out 7.3 billion with a B potential customers. Okay, that was a little while. So we're on international sales. Yeah, whoops. Sorry. Okay, uh, our Disney hat box sold and went to uh, Moi, I can't see it, Moi Wu Lantana. I can't remember. I, I should have wrote, oh, Moi, yeah, Moi Wu Wo, Lantau, Hong Kong, went to Hong Kong. Um, and so I did a little look at, when I saw Disneyland on there, I had to put Mickey and Minnie on the map. And then I did not know, I'm sure you know, Jason, there's like at least eight tiki mug, uh, tiki bars in Hong Kong. Tiki mm-hmm. So I got some screenshots from some of them there. And isn't that a cool little mug? I threw that up there too, because we always like to teach everything. Yeah. That we teach you. So this Disney just dawned on me. This Disney mug went to Hong Kong and there's a Disneyland in Hong Kong. My brain's yeah. a little slow too. So sell. So, oh, here's my other bonus tip with this. When I brought it up on eBay, it said I could not ship it. The, the address was messed up. And I thought, oh my gosh, I jumped in the thrifting board. I did a search for Hong Kong and our friend C.R. Sullivan, who takes good care of us with shipping, it came up. This has been a known issue with eBay in Hong Kong since 2013. So I jump over to Pirate Ship, which I usually use for international anyway. Bam, got it shipped and it's been on its way. So if you have Hong Kong sale and something, and I don't use the US GSP very much, go to Pirate Ship and they can take care of you. Awesome. All right. I wanted to do a tough pronunciation too. So mine's in France. It's It was like Plua. Uh, and it was a uh, sampler from the uh, tribute to Black Sabbath. This is Ugly Kid Joe doing the Black Sabbath song NIB. So see, music, the music and tiki mugs, the world over. Yes, for sure. All right. Now, now it's time for close encounters of the thrifty kind, kind, kind. Okay, <laughs> yours involves a knife and a scary dude. What? <laughs> This was crazy. We're in our favorite little thrift store in our town. And there's this guy walking around. He's got the shorts on with the high top white socks and just the whole thing. And he's very loud and he's kind of obnoxious. And he's got the, all the hair. I mean, he looked pretty much like this guy, but he was a nice guy. He was smiling. So anyway, he kind of cornered me over in the electronics. What are you looking at? So I showed him. I said, well, this little thing, you put your pictures in. You can- well, I got 53,000 photos. He just kept talking to me. I'm like, okay, finally got away from him. He's over in the, but before he did, he said something about, I'm a truck driver. I said, yeah, I wonder, you know, how safe, blah, blah. I carry a gun. It's always on my, my dash. I learned it's illegal, supposedly in California to carry a gun. If there's no chamber, no bullet in the first chamber. So after that, it's okay. And I'm like going, okay, this is not what I'm here for. And then he tells me this, he goes, and if I, if my, I can't get to my gun, I have my friend Betty. He pulls his switchblade out of his pocket, flips it open right in front of me and goes, meet Betty. And I'm like, hey, Betty. So I'm thinking, okay, I feel safe. My husband's here somewhere. Um, <laughs> then he goes over to the, the special vintage corner where Bill bought those pins and he's yelling, we need service over here now. And everybody in the thrift store is kind of going, oh my gosh, what's going on? And I'm thinking, yep, that's Betty and his friend over there. <laughs> so it was a kind of an interesting, I mean, he was oh. a nice guy and I would use him as a bodyguard anywhere. I would. <laughs> But it was a very unusual thrifting time for me that day. <laughs> All right. I got one too this week and I remember to take pictures so I can build the story. I am way out on the east side of town, like almost to the edge of the city. He's way far away. And the uh, I was going to an answer in an ad on a marketplace and I was going to pick up some stuff. And the guy said, okay, I'm in building five. Here's the code to get in my gate. Just let me know when you're here and I'll come down. The second I pulled up Facebook Messenger as a whole across the country went down no message him but i didn't know it at first i thought it was my phone so i called my wife i go can you go grab my laptop and message this guy and she goes yeah messenger's not working so i'm sitting there for 20 minutes so now he's obviously thinking i flaked and just so i just start knocking on doors and building five and and here's the bonus these two young gentlemen were using the leaf blowers around the building while i'm trying to knock and listen <laughs> and i got someone finally answers the door and I had this picture from our chat on Facebook. I go, do you know this guy? And now I think I probably look like a bounty hunter. You know this guy? <laughs> so I'm like, look, I'm just buying some cassettes. He's one of your neighbors. I don't know what apartment he lives in. I was holding the mail tub, an empty mail tub. I'm like, I just want to pick up my cassettes. 
And so finally, I knocked on every door and he opened one of them. I'm like, oh, thank God. Oh, my gosh. That, that's the best ever. <laughs> yep. So there's my 30 encounter for the week. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time for You've Got to Be Ship Me. What to do and what not to do when it comes to shipping. Okay, I've talked before that white roll of paper on the left. I get that at Sam's Club. That's my packing paper. It's always new and clean. I use that. Well, the other day I was out digging through our boxes in the garage and I found the tube that comes out of the middle of that. And I looked at it and I thought, this thing is heavy and thick, perfect to cut for whatever length I need to put into a priority flat, padded flat rate envelope to put something in it, something fragile. That would, you could probably run your car over that tube and it wouldn't bend. So save your tube. Some come in my bubble wrap too, but they're not as thick as this. Save your tube, save your trash, your clean trash, you know, things to ship with. Cause that would oh, be yeah. great. I've got a closet corner full of those thicker tubes for just that reason. Good tip. All right. So I am selling this uh, Millennium Falcon, Han Solo and uh, Chewbacca Tiki bowl and little mug set. And I decided to go with standard shipping. It's a pretty big box and it'll go into a little bit bigger box. And I do the generic standard because if it's going to somebody in San Fran or LA or Phoenix, I can ship it priority, no problem. If it's going to somebody in Vermont, because of the size, I'll probably end up going FedEx home. So with the generic standard shipping, I can pick and choose what I want. Now, let me look at my competition. First competition is charging $54.50 for shipping. <laughs> so I beat him hands down. Second competition, free shipping. But this is what I always tell you. Make sure you're comparing apples to apples. You know what kind of returns number three offers? He don't. No returns. I offer 60 days. Do you know what kind of international shipping number three offers? None. I ship the world over. So I don't mind charging for shipping because I beat him on my terms of service hands down. Someone will pay a little bit more to have that warm, fuzzy feeling because I offer returns or someone in uh, the UK or Australia will buy it because I'll ship to them and at a right. reasonable rate. Good job. All right. Do, 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 do. Now it's time for the thrifty tips of the week. Little tips and tricks to help you out when you are outsourcing. Okay. When you're thrifting, pay attention to what's going on on the cash register. Sometimes we're so busy putting our stuff on to the belt or whatever. And I'm, I'm assuming they're ringing everything up, right? But then I got home one day and I was going through my receipt. I check everything off. I log it into my spreadsheet so I know, you know how much I paid for everything. I got charged 10 bucks for something that I did not buy. <laughs> I didn't want to go back because this, this thrift store supports a homeless shelter. I'm like, oh, well, whatever. But it made me realize I need to slow down and pay attention to what they're ringing up because you can see it there. And then if I need to ask them a question, hey, wait, stop. Because by the time I get home two or three days later, pull the bag out, I have no idea. So pay attention. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Buffalo Shade Shred overcharged me two weeks ago. And uh, yeah, so yeah, you're right. Keep keep your eye on your on as they're ringing out so you don't get home and find out that they overcharged you. All right, so every night when I go to bed, Stacey and I climb into bed, we watch a movie over like five or six nights. We, we watch a half hour, go to sleep. As Stacey's fall asleep, I hop on my iPad and I look at whatever CDs are for sale. And that's why I was at that guy's house the other day. And I wanted to share with you I sourced from two different people. All these are all records and all these CDs and cassettes. Now, when I got home, I realized, okay, between, between the two stops, records, CDs, and cassettes, I spent $240. And I, I kid you not, when I counted them, Deb, I have exactly 240 items. No way. <laughs> so even though these records were $10 a piece and these CDs were 50 cents on the average, it was a dollar a piece. So nice. if you uh, are smart about, you know, making sure you clean your stuff and uh, disinfect, you can find some good deals on Marketplace. Yes. Now it's time for our online selling tips of the week. Doesn't matter if you're selling on Depop, Etsy, Macari, eBay, or Poshmark. Here's some little tips and tricks to help you out when selling. Okay, um, quite a while, a couple, of, several years ago, I got dinged because I didn't know the buyer had paid. Well, he had paid me, but I didn't respond to him and let him know. Two hours later, he dinged my DSRs and my communication. So that taught me, as soon as they pay, I leave automatic feedback. So I wanted to show you the steps to do that in Seller Hub. Over on the left, you go down selling tools, and then you can follow these steps. And then the 
the number two pink arrow, that shows the link to number three, and that's where you can put in your custom, your your slow, your uh, your phrase. So I, I, everybody gets the same thing, super fast payment, great buyer, very positive. Soon as they pay, they get that feedback. I don't have to worry about leaving it, and then they know, hey, she knows I paid her. My item's gonna be getting shipped. And it starts it off on a happy note. I think the transaction goes smoother, and I think I may get you know more feedback because of it, because they see, oh, they left me feedback, the items here. I've heard so many people say, I don't leave feedback until they have the item, till they leave me feedback. And I'm like, oh no, I don't play that game. Let's just, they did what they did, they bought it, they're fine. Um, maybe yeah. they don't have a store. You might have to have a store. That's a good point. Um, I was doing this when I didn't have the premium, I have the premium store now. I was actually paying $11 a month for this feature. It was that important to me, I didn't care. $11 a month I paid. <laughs> have this feature. So when I bumped up to a premium, I'm like, well, I don't have to pay that $11 anymore. Of course, I'm paying more for the premium store. So yes, that's a good point. You do have to have a store. I believe a premium because I've always had a basic store forever. So when I bumped up to the premium, this is included now. Yeah, I know that, I know that forever too. All right. We, we teased on this last week. If you're not familiar, if you're not, if you don't know, Poshmark is way more than clothes. There's a lot of tiki mugs and I bought six tiki mugs for $66 with shipping a couple of weeks ago. So $11 each. And I've already flipped two on eBay, $60 and $75. So ah. if you're not sourcing from the comfort of your couch, you are missing out on a lot of good stuff. So. I love that mug. I would have bought it for whatever you paid if I would have seen it. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> so you know, look, look, when you're watching TV tonight after this show is over, source. Find stuff. Find stuff on Marketplace. Find stuff on Poshmark. People misspell, misprice, take crappy pictures all the time. Well, just like your friend that was going to sell all those mugs for $400 less. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's an expert. He should know. So you yep. never know. Now it's time for Unseasonably Sold. What did you sell out of season? Whoops, whoops, there we go. I don't have anything this week. This never happens. My own segments, I have nothing. I, I ain't got nothing to pretend. I got nothing. I have the, what heck, a qua, not a trifecta, a quafrecta. I had everything this week. I have a Christmas CD. It sat around for a while, sold for $19.99, Pottery Barn, new. Hey, I'm happy I paid $1.99 for it. Someone in June said, you know what I need right now? Pottery Barn Christmas music. That's what I need. And we had it for them. Awesome. Good job. Yep. I didn't have anything this week. So let me get, uh, let me do a little quick housekeeping here and then we'll get Dustin in. Okay. So because I don't do enough shows and YouTube things are ready, uh, the low in Nayla, which is Nadine and Lola's, uh, Friday morning show, uh, Lola is not feeling well. So I'm going to fill in as color commentary co-host tomorrow noon, East coast, Nine o'clock, nine a.m. on the West Coast. That is on Nalo's uh, YouTube channel, not mine. I'm just filling in as co-host. So please come on over if you don't know Depop. Come on over. I'm going to be learning too, and I'm actually going to list tonight on Depop. I'm going to have Nadine grade my listing, see how I did. And today I dropped this video. If you haven't seen the news story, six eBay employees were uh, uh, arrested for cyber stalking and uh, mentally terrorizing a couple in Massachusetts. So uh, I've been on eBay a long time. I wanted to drop my uh, thoughts on this. So when you get a chance, check it out. It's only about uh, 28 minutes. For those of you in the Seeker Beach, tomorrow night is my monthly webinar, what to do when you're in emergency. My PayPal got compromised two weeks ago, but I was prepared in case it did. And I was okay moving on, or was I? find out more tomorrow and immediately following we're having the secret beach cocktail zoom party number three where we have a group cocktail every week and this week we're playing stump the tiki expert so you've if you've not if you're the secret beach and you've not gotten your entries into debbie get them into debbie so we can have some fun stump of me tomorrow and then sunday is father's day so we are going to be celebrating all fathers of both humans and fur kids and we're going to be talking to big daddy my father about his shipping exploits because, and we're going to talk to Dustin about this in about two seconds. He ships a lot of big stuff too. And my dad isn't afraid of anything big. So we're going to talk to daddy on uh, Sunday. And then next week, Stacy and I are actually getting away from all the craziness and going away for a couple of days. So we have no shows next weekend for the first time in forever. So we're taking, Stacy and I are taking a little break, but then we'll be back the following week. All right. 
dang it, I, I still haven't done anything with like the doorbell to get our guests in here. Uh, <laughs> ding dong, there, uh, that'll work. Hi. How are you, Dustin? Good, how are you guys? Uh, we are good. All right, so let's jump right in. Let me explain how uh, Dustin and I ended up chatting. Dustin doesn't know this yet, but we're going to be best friends. So he doesn't know that yet, but it's happening. Uh, he joined the thrifting board uh, like a week and a half ago and sent me a message and said, hey, uh, I do videos. Do you mind if I post them? Now, A, I am always appreciative when people ask permission. The amount of people who just think, I'm going to post my own stuff in someone else's home is always mind boggling to me. Now, typically when I watch them, especially on somebody new, like, I don't know you, like, I didn't build my audience for you. But I watched the video and I'm like, damn, Dustin gets it. It's so good. It's the way it should be. And I, I was telling him earlier, a lot of times, Deb, I got to tell people, no, no, here's here's what you got to do to get a little bit better at it. I don't want to see 23 minutes of you driving to the thrift store and, in, and your neighbor's mailbox fell over. I don't want to see that. That is not exciting. Right. So thank you. Thank you for asking. Thanks for coming on. Welcome. We're going to back up in a bit, but, but what made you start? Because you're, you're, you're relatively new to being a YouTuber. It's only about, been about eight months. What made you decide, hey, I want to do this? I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like um, I just really love storytelling in general. Um, and my brother, of course, who is in some of my videos, was like, you know, you should totally do a YouTube channel on just some of the more strange things that you're finding, some of the weird stories that, you know, you have <clears throat> for some of these items. So that's sort of how we got started doing it. Um, and it's just been a lot of fun. Like I just love creating the content, so it's always it's always fun to do it. Really there's good. my there's my artwork or Nadine's artwork for me. So um, you know, and 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 this is the first time this has ever happened. I've had plenty of people send me videos, and some have been good. Some are too long. Some you know, but I I binge watch. I've seen every video now in the last two days. And when you watch anybody from the day they started to today. You watch them change. Like my show is so different from the first time Nadine and I, when she was my co-host, went live. Uh, so I've watched your opening change uh, at least three times. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, <laughs> that's been a little bit of a process for sure. I think um, yeah, I, I had to change it. It was just a little a little too long, a little bit too intense at first. So. Well, and here's the thing, Deb. Uh, here's what I watch, and it, it's it, and one of the reasons I want to have him on is uh, we're gonna talk about a bunch of things. He he finds a lot of cool stuff. He knows stuff about stuff that we and have never talked about. But a lot of people want to do YouTube, so I thought I found a guy who's doing it just right, and let's talk to him. So what what he used to do with his openings was he would actually start, "Hey, I found this great mug today. Let's check it out," and then he would play his opening. And his opening was like, hey, I'm, I like treasure hunting and, and telling stories. Then he switched it to the opening started it. And then he switched it to the opening doesn't have uh, you talking anymore. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I don't know. I, I felt like it was just too it was just too long. Like the new opening, it's just a little bit cleaner. It's just like a few quick flashes. I feel like it sums up like what the episode is, you know, what the channel's about, which is kind of important. You know, you want to know what you're getting into. Nobody wants to waste their time clicking away on things that aren't what they're interested in. So uh, I sent it right over to Deb. I go, hey, watch this video. I think I want to have him on the show because he. You, here's what's good too. You, you're very entertaining, entertaining. You're very engaging, and you're dropping a lot of fun. But but if you're paying attention, you're dropping a ton of knowledge. Oh yeah. Within the fun, and so when I showed it to Debbie, Debbie's like, oh heck yeah, let's let's talk to him. Uh, I'm like, I'm so happy you guys had me on. I was super excited about it. I was looking forward to this all week. So I really yeah. appreciate it. As to it, I'm right around the corner in Pacifica Beach right now. <laughs> I saw the Taco Bell. It's supposed to be the fanciest yeah. Taco Bell in the uh, in yeah. country. So. Yeah, it's right on the beach. You can walk right up to the window from the beach. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's good real estate for sure. Yes. So did anyone uh, say anything to you or did you just start watching your own videos and realize, all right, I need to change this and this and this to, to, to tighten it up a little bit? Um, I just like, I, I have a really short attention span and I will watch other people's videos and see things that, you know, make me kind of like not want to keep watching. And so I've just tried to really like chop out anything, any dead air. Like if I'll watch one of my videos a million times and I'm like, okay, is that necessary? No, is that necessary? No. Like I just try to cut as much fat as possible and just keep it very, um, I want everything to be something, you know? That's I don't know good. if that's. Sense. Yeah. Oh yeah, it does. That's nice. Yeah. 
Uh, and and I, that's why I wanted uh, to talk because I know a lot of people want to start their YouTubes, and I've got friends that started some within the last couple of weeks. And I, thinking about my show, about half the segments we do now, we weren't doing at the beginning. Things changed. We got rid of some stuff. And, you know, the unseasonably sold where where I realized I was selling Halloween masks and Christmas stuff all through like May and April. Oh, and yeah. A lot of people think you should wait to the seasons. I was like, let's add the unseasonably sold because we want to teach people, man, you find something good Christmas, list it, but list it at what the price would be on December 20th. Right. Not, not April price. Yeah, I think that's good. I, uh, I, <laughs> I mean, I've, I sell things for Christmas year round. Like I'll find Christmas stuff that people will buy in the middle of August. Like it just doesn't seem to phase a lot of people. It's a big holiday. <laughs> people like it. <laughs> All right. Is it this? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so let's back up now. You live in San Francisco. Did you grow up in San Francisco? No. So I grew up in Texas. And uh, from Texas, I moved to LA about 18, like right after school. Um, so I've kind of, I've done some jumping around. And uh, the reason, uh, if you guys have seen uh, Dustin's videos, the reason he's so good and engaging is you are also an actor. I am, yes. <laughs> I, I discovered your reel on YouTube. Did I, did I show that to you, Deb? No, but what was the first thing I said to you? It, was he an actor? Is he an entertainer? I uh, knew it right away. And he said, oh, yeah, he's got his IMBD page or whatever, but I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Yes, definitely. I do have some uh, I do have some movies out there. <laughs> so I got to say, in your reel, you were in a uh, – what soap opera was that, that you were in? The Young and the Restless. Okay. Ooh, so yeah. you were in one episode, correct? Yeah. Uh, yes. Were, were you a waiter or a busboy? A bus boy. Okay. I got to tell you, and this is just, this, I'm not saying this just because you're on my show. <laughs> you outacted the person who's normally on the show. <laughs> I'm a bus boy. <laughs> you were so good and smooth, and she seems so uh, like reading the line, reading the line, reading oh the line. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. No, I, I was like, honestly, that was one of my favorite things ever because my grandma is insanely like religious. She does not watch movies, like nothing with cursing. Like she's very, you know, like by the book. And she, the one thing she watches is Young and the Restless. So I'm like, I've got to get on something that she will actually be able to see. And so that was like oh, one awesome. thing that she was able to watch. That's my grandson. Yeah, she was like, able to tune in for that. Thankfully. So, so and, and the I, I would say the biggest thing you were in was the um, social network. Yeah, yeah. The the movie about Facebook. So I'm, I'm sure most of us have watched that. You're in that. Are you still pursuing acting? Is that still something you do or is that? You know, I do it occasionally. Every now and then a project will come along that I will want to do. Um, I'm definitely not as proactive in looking for roles as much as I was. I mean, there was a point I was doing like four or five movies a year. And now I'm just like, maybe I'll do one every year or two. It's just kind of, I, I'm really enjoying what I'm doing, you know? And like, awesome. I think that kind of doing the YouTube videos sort of like scratches that itch for me a little bit, but I really love, um, I, don't, I don't know, like I love reselling and sourcing and and then to do the YouTube videos and do the storytelling, like it's just kind of a whole it kind of, I don't know, it does it for me. So I'm definitely. You do that very well. I'm happy with it. You Debbie, know? did you watch all his videos? Not all of them yet. I was watching okay. one today where you had the, the mug, coffee mugs that sold for, I won't even say how much they sold for. The Wait. white one. And I'm reading that to my husband and my brother. I'm like, look at this. <laughs> They looked, they looked so boring, and then they it, it actually ended up selling for more than what I even thought they were going to sell for. Like I, yeah, I, I I'm not going to say because I don't know what you're going to talk about in your scores, but it was awesome. Yeah, Great. so I took notes because I watched every single video, yeah. and what's good, uh, what's good, what you do really well, and that's what I try and get people to make sure they understand that is framing the shot. You guys, you and your brother are in Mexico, he wasn't doing so well, and. Uh, <laughs> You got it was pouring rain, Deb, and they went and had some tacos. And while they're there, uh, a, a partial mariachi band came up and played. And Dustin was selfie filming, and he was lip syncing. Had the guys perfectly framed over his shoulder. Just did it so well. I mean, it's not a long moment; it's just a couple seconds. But if you do put out content like I do and, and you do, Deb, you got to pay attention to what's being framed and stuff. You know, if I sat all the way over here, it'd be ridiculous. But you got to make sure you're framed right, and, and you do it very well. 
And uh, so good job on that. I can't wait to see that one. <laughs> My poor brother. He yeah. So does your, do you and your brother live together? No, he, he has his own place. Um, but we, we had the, sh the same workspace. So we just do a lot of work together. We, our businesses are separate. Everything's separate. But it's like it's so much fun. You know, you get to go and like work and hang out with your best friend and just like act ridiculous and take photos and, you know, be stupid. You can, you can ship for each other. If you're out of if someone's out of town or something, exactly. Yeah. exactly. And he has me. And, and funny enough, that's kind of what I'm talking about tomorrow night in the Seager Beach. You know, if you fell down tomorrow and broke both your arms, is there someone you can call to ship the next day? Yeah, you got to have that person. Now, yeah. what are the chances any one of us right now are going to fall down and break both our arms tomorrow? Probably I not. Know. But it's happened to people. Oh, it happens. Even breaking one arm would be hard to ship. Having just one hand. That's a problem. <laughs> all right. So the one thing throughout all your videos that stood out to me that is really uh, shocking in a good way is your knowledge of African art and tribal stuff. Like people see me in, in music and tiki mugs. And they're like, what? And then I watch you and I'm like, I feel like I'm dumb. <laughs> I really <laughs> feel dumb because you have. So, so where'd you get all this knowledge of, of African uh, art and tribal stuff? I mean, I've just done a lot of research, honestly, on like the on like the African stuff for sure, because I've never been to Africa. Um, it's definitely on my list, but it's just like one of the only places in the world where there's so much, there's such a huge concentration of of culture variation. There's so many different tribes and different regions, and the art is so different in each tribe. So. It's, it's kind of cool to be able to find a mask. And even though masks are fairly common throughout Africa, they're, they're really not. Like there is a mask. You can tell exactly what tiny part of the region that that comes from. And I think that that's pretty cool. That's awesome. Because I'm always asking Jason, is this Tiki? No, probably African. <laughs> <laughs> but, but think about everyone right now who's watching, who's in the chat. Think about every flea market you've been to. There's always like that one or two booths that have the African art, the bean. Yeah the carved stuff. And you know, we've all walked past them because there's nothing in our um, uh, knowledge. We all have our specialty, but we always skip that. And I see, I see people buying stuff and I'm like, is it price right? I, I don't know. But yeah. watching, watching you uh, sell so much of it, pick so much. And that's what I love too. You, you guys got to watch his videos because like I said, you're dropping all this knowledge. Like not that I have a working knowledge yet, but I see how infectious you are, and you're like, all right. And and you make really good videos. Like, here's the tribe. Here's where they live. Here's what this is. This is what this stool means. You know, it's, it's very impressive. <laughs> well, thank you. So hey, Debbie, uh, so Debbie lives near you. Uh, you know, she's visiting, but she lives a little bit north northeast of San Francisco. She wants to know what flea markets you go to, so she can uh, hound you and follow you. <laughs> Take all my stuff, Debbie. I don't. Um, I don't do that to friends. Trust me. Ask Jason. I'll get stuff and I'll wait. We met at a, a music store, and I was going ahead, but I gave it all to him. Uh, I don't do funny. this to my friends. So, <laughs> so funny. Um, no, you know it's funny. Like I actually don't stay around in my area at all. Like I am really? constantly driving. Like honestly, that's part of what I love about this is I can go to a different city every. I'll spend a weekend somewhere and just stock up on stuff and bring it all home. Um, you know, so I'm kind of going all over the place. Like, I'll go to Sacramento, I'll go to LA, I'll go to uh, Reno. I spent like a weekend in Reno just stocking up on things. That Love there. thrifting in Reno. Yeah, it's just like, it's so much fun to kind of like find a new place you've never been and, you know, just kind of like stock up on a bunch of different things. And it's kind of like a trip that pays for itself. And then you get to go home with a bunch of new things. Heather. <laughs> See, we were destined to be friends. My wife and I do that too. We, we, plan our travels like we have to go here so here's the flea market we're going to hit here's the best record store in that city here's the best thrift store yeah. in that city. you can like make a whole weekend out of it yeah now, dustin do you go to thrift stores too or just flea um, market? i do go to thrift stores i don't go as often as i used to um because i feel like i can find more flea markets now but i i definitely do go to thrift stores still well, if sure. you ever come to vacaville on your way to reno look me yeah. up we'll go to savers together i was literally just there i think Yesterday, I drove right through Vacaville. Yeah, you're there okay. and I'm here. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, have you ever been to uh, um, the Treasure Island flea market? Uh, yes, I have. Is I it have. any good? I've always missed it. You know, I I did find some things there, so I, I don't want to say it was a total bust. It was um, a little bit like 
there was a, there was a good amount of things that people made. So it was like a lot of crafts. You could buy soap there. So it wasn't like my kind of flea market per se. But you definitely, I did find some things for sure. Like I, I would much rather go to a flea market that's just like all my stuff, like vintage, antiques, that kind of thing. It's like that's where I can really you know do well. But um, I did okay there. It was good. As the only bummer living in Vegas, Vegas has a lot of great things like gambling and Kmart, but yes. uh, no flea markets. We have one swap meet that does have a little bit of use. It's mostly like parakeets and oranges and socks and, and mattresses, uh, but a little bit of use. But that's it. We don't have any flea markets here at all. I mean, it's still hot there, though, I guess. Yeah, so. that's the problem. It's very yeah. hot. You guys um, an indoor flea market, I would think, no? We do. We it's, it's called a swap meet, but again, it's all like wigs and boa constrictors, mm. and you know. Yeah. Do you uh, go to the Alameda flea market much, Dustin? I do. Yeah, I love that one. That one's one of my. That favorites. might be a better one for you, Jason. I've yeah. been. Oh, yeah, I've, I've been there. Too. I've been there three times, I think. Yeah. The. Uh, oh, how about the Granddaddy, the Rose Bowl? Swap me. Oh, I've never been there. What? Uh, we, all right, we'll have to meet there. And I'm, here's the deal with the Rose no. Bowl. It's so big. So the first time my wife and I went, we went at a normal pace. Booth, look at everything. Booth. Three hours later, we realized we hadn't dented at all. <laughs> You're like, we're in the first aisle. So the, so the next time, I, let's try this. We walked at a quick clip doing this. And if something caught our eye, then we stopped. Because yeah, I'm the kind of guy that feels like I got to see every booth or I feel bad. Okay, we can we can shop together then because that's the problem. I've gone shopping with people and it's like they love to take their time and shop. Me, I'm like, you have oh, yeah. to do everything. You know, like, if, we, if we end up in a booth with tiki mugs or music or you end up in a booth with African art, you would stop and work. Yep. But if it's a booth of doilies, I ain't even breaking uh, stride. I'm going to be looking at doilies. <laughs> oh, I, I, my good friend Craig and, and his husband Rick, they've been to the Rose Bowl and they're from Canada. Oh, now, I will say, have you been to the Long Beach Flea Market? I've been to the Long Beach Flea Market, yeah. I like it a little bit better than Rose Bowl. Rose Bowl, uh, some of the same vendors, they kick the price up, but it is fun to walk the whole thing of the Rose Bowl. It's about, you can if you move decent, you can get through it in seven and a half hours. Oh, my gosh. Is that including lunch? Do you stop for lunch? Yeah, we'll, gra we'll grab a hot dog or you know something to keep on trucking. Yeah, we, we bought so much furniture once. We loaded up our SUV, and I drove all the way to Vegas, like like this, just looking out the window, because that's all I could see. We had some, I think, strapped to the roof. Like, we had just, and we were already full, and we found a bamboo, uh, uh, like a tiki aquarium. Like, we're going to squeeze that in, too. Now you have a truck. Yeah. What size of a truck do you have? You have, like, just a big van or something? We had, at, at that time, we had, like, uh, an Armada. Right now, I have a big old pickup truck. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, we we fill it up. All right, so I've been I, I've been wanting to wait until the show. Why dingo? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a good story for you, but this is ridiculous. Actually, I I mean it was like seventh grade. AOL just came out, and everyone's like, "You need an AOL account." And I'm like, "Well, okay, what should I do?" They're like, "Just pick something you think sounds cool." And I'm like, "Dingoes are cool." <laughs> <laughs> like the seventh grade thing that I picked for my email address, and I just kept it for all these years because I liked it. It went from my uh, my YouTube, it went to my um, eBay. It's it's still my email address, just not AOL anymore. But yeah, that's that's kind of where that came from. Does the five eight eight five eight eight mean anything in your YouTube yeah. name? No, nope. it was probably just the first number that wasn't taken. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean that's it. All right, so I want I want everyone to watch every video, but if you want to watch only one, only one, uh, it's gonna be this one right here. That's what I watched today. Oh my god! I, oh, creepiest <gasps> hate sale. <laughs> Let me find. Uh, Jason sent me the link and said, "Watch this." So I dropped everything and watched it. Right all right, now. so you're not gonna hear it right now, but you're gonna want to hear. You're going to want to hear and see what's going on in this room, and especially with, hey, wait for it. Yeah, that. Why? Uh, <laughs> Why? Did it stink? Did that house smell really bad? I haven't. Oh, it just smelled like an old house, but like, I just, I couldn't figure out what was happening. I'm like, I'm, I think I'm going to be murdered at some point. However, I, I'm in love with the nooks and crannies upstairs there. Like, I, I, don't I mean, somebody really got creative with this house. I'm telling oh, you. yeah. So watch this because this is hidden rooms in the walls kind of house and mm -hmm. bloody pillows in the air vents. Like, it's 
It's crazy. Now, now I'm going to tell you why I'm a little mad at you. You didn't look at any of those slides. <laughs> okay. I didn't. I didn't. I was honestly yeah, a little bit. Slides of like death or something. I mean, what? No. I know. And this was also, also, this was the estate sale where I had like found those mugs that we were just talking about. And they were just kind of piled in the kitchen downstairs. So I was also a little worried somebody was going to go and like take those. So I was really kind of trying to rush. And that room was utterly terrifying. So it wasn't anywhere I wanted to like hang out and like <laughs> do my shopping. <laughs> All right. So what is that? You got to hear him describe it. But yeah, it's uh, the pillow that may or may not have blood on it. And Linda, if you love creepy houses, this will win. For sure. When you see everything, and especially the thing you show hanging from the ceiling, my wife and I are both like, "Did you guys?" Here's my wife thought: giant bird. <laughs> oh, totally. Giant I bird. Don't, I don't still don't know what that was for. Like, why is that there? Well, I have to ask: Is there more video from that show that you have that you didn't put in it? Could we have a part two? No, I mean, like everything weird that was happening. And honestly, there was that one when I was in the kitchen, I swear one of the cabinets opened by itself and I didn't get it on camera. And I was like, that would have been so cool for a video. And it just didn't. I didn't. Oh, and that made me think, because I was going to ask you this. I thought you were shooting with your phone, but then when you go into the secret room, you turn um, on your phone. What are you shooting with when you're in like uh, estate sales and stuff? Well, you're going to love this. I have it in my pocket. I have it with me at all times. This is, uh, it's like this really cool does this thing. Wow, like a GoPro, kind of? Yeah, and it's like on a, it's like on a, I don't know what the heck that thing's called. Uh, what the hell's the term for that? Shit. I don't so think that's I the whole camera, right? Yeah, so like, it's just really small. It's easy to put in your pocket, and then when you're done with it, it just does this weird little- Well, what I like is I just saw there was a display in the back, so when you're shooting, you actually can yeah. see it. Yeah, so you, you can watch everything that you want to see here. And it's small, so you can be filming and people don't really see it, right? Exactly. And it has all kinds of cool things. It's got facial recognition, so you can set it down and it'll follow you around. It's kind of cool. My mom wants to know if she'll have nightmares if she watches that video. No, I don't know. I really had nightmares about that place. That's all I'm going to play. All I kept thinking of, you're saying it was scary. Jason loves that stuff. He would oh, have yeah. loved to have been in there. I mean, it was just all so weird that I was the only one there. Like, normally you go to an estate, so there's other people, and I'm just like by myself, and I'm just wondering if I'm like, if I stumbled in someone's bedroom and I'm not supposed to be in here. Like, it was just very weird. All right. So everyone's saying gimbal, but it's so funny. Gimbal, yes. Craig's husband, Rick, obviously it keeps auto correcting because he wrote humble and fumble. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, obviously his thing is just auto correcting and not being nice with him. <laughs> we love you, Rick. So, uh, so, so selling for the most part, it's your full time gig. Yep. That's it. Just um, source, sell, ship. I love it. And yeah. how long how long have you been selling? Since like I think 2014. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's just been kind of like one of those things where um, started going thrifting and grabbing things at thrift stores, and I'm like, actually, you can make money doing this, and you can make a living doing this, and it slowly went from like being a small box next to my bed with like these are my eBay things to like taking over the closet to then entire dining room to then needing a separate space. It just kind of like blew up into something. Giant Your stuff. workspace is awesome. Every time I'm looking, I'm staring at those white pillars. I'm just like, <laughs> <"I'm gonna> <laughs> where is that compared to where you live, that workspace? I can walk there. So it's actually like five blocks, maybe five or six blocks. Okay. Yeah. Um, my brother found this like insane place that I was like, I mean, as San Francisco, it's like nearly impossible to find spaces like that. So it's really changed how we do things. Now, we is that part of a space? Like you rented part of a, a, a warehouse or something, or is that the whole thing? It's basically the bottom floor of a building. So okay. it's just the whole bottom floor. So it's it's tons of space. Um, the lighting's not amazing, but we put some really good lighting in there so we can get good photos. And it's, yeah, it's, it's worked really well. So really- Is happy. your brother also, is that his full-time job too? Yep. Is he big? does full-time too. Um, I love how opposite you are. You're so, God, he's real quiet. Now he fixes a lot of stuff. Are you handy too, or does he do no. all the fixing? No, he is like, we are complete opposites. It's crazy. We'll go to the same flea market, and if we split up, we'll get together at the end of the day, and it's like, we'll have two totally, like we went to two <laughs> different places. You know, he like loves vintage tech, and- things that he can fix. And he's just very talented with that kind of stuff. And I'm like, I sell it as it's found. I'm like, it, it could be broken. I don't know. It's definitely dirty. You're going to have to clean it. Like I, he's, he fixes it. I'm just like, I can't, can't even do it. 
So in one of your videos, you walked into, uh, I think it was an antique store or something. And, and I wanted to ask if you have the same feeling that the rest of us do. So if I walked into an estate sale and there was a bunch of tiki mugs, you know, my heart skips a beat. It's that one where you walked in and they had all the African stuff that you bundled and uh, cut a crazy deal. Did your heart just go? <laughs> yeah, in? totally, totally. Because that is like, um, uh, Deb, I don't know if you're familiar with Guerneville. Uh-huh. Yeah, so like it, it was, a, it's an antique shop up there. So I try to go up there because it's pretty close, you know, a few times a year. And they have this one antique shop where I can always get good stuff because they always get new stuff and it's good prices. So when I went in and I saw like all of my, I'm like, this is my, this is my home. I mean, I'm happy right now. Like everything I could ever have imagined was there, like different tribes, different art, like ever. It was amazing. So, wow, so yeah. somebody must have donated all that maybe because it was used, oh. right? He got it from a, a storage unit and it's just like, it's so sad. Somebody, I guess, had passed away and their family was like, we don't know what to do with all this. So they auctioned off the storage unit. All of this stuff, I mean, it could have probably been put in a museum. Like it was very, very good quality stuff. Um, and some of that stuff, I mean, it just sold for so much money. And I mean, it just like, they, they sold it, at, you know, for next to nothing. So. That's what keeps us all going. Coming, like I mean, with those Dungeons and Dragons, I, I don't care about it. But I paid like two hundred dollars, I think, or what. I'm doing very well with those. But when you come up on a, a treasure trove, like Jason said, you're just like, oh my gosh. for me, it's books, a whole sets of kids' books. I'm like, oh my gosh! All right, so Dustin and I met <laughs> two weeks too late because as I'm watching his videos, I'm like, I told him, please tell me you still have these wow. lamps, please. Oh, I, he goes, I just sold them two weeks ago. I'm like, oh. oh my gosh. I tell you, I had them for like a year. Nobody wanted them. Like, and then. The minute you wanted them, they were gone, like literally the week before. So All right, so here, here's a little tip I want to uh, uh, expel on everybody, because I want to ask you, because you I, you do pick up a lot of lamps. When you're finding cool lamps like this that don't have the shade, are you just selling them without the shade, or are you out now sourcing, trying to find the perfect shade to make the full lamp? I never sell shades, ever. Okay. Shades are like a huge money pit. Because a lamp is not that big, right? Like you can ship a lamp for fairly inexpensive, but the minute you put a shade on it, it's gonna triple the price of the shipping. You're gonna lose a lot of money. And it's really cheap for somebody to go and buy a shade, you know, at Hobby you Lobby or something. You don't know what shade they want. Do they want pink, purple, yellow, white? What size? You don't exactly. know. You can pick whatever shade you want. I'm just shipping you the lamp. Those and you, yeah, and you found you found the one rain lamp. I didn't get a picture of it. The one rain lamp I've never seen with a clock. Yeah, I'd never seen that either before. Um, and they and for whatever reason, those ones are they're rare and it sold really, really quickly. So so was, was it already uh, working and functional? Yeah, it was functional for sure. Because I, mean, I, I never. Have, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You can't them, like you can't put. I don't put the oil in it to test it, so you can't like test the pump and all of that. I guess, but you you know the clock worked, the light worked, and all of that kind of stuff. So I mentioned that, but I mean the minute you put the oil in it, it's just going to be so messy to like. <laughs> Have Ooh, to ship yeah. it. Yeah. So, yeah. so I knew that I want to refurbish for me. And one of my friends who's a, a thrifting friend and a tiki friend, he gutted it to redo it. And he goes, Man, it's a mess to clean them all up when it's got the old oil. Yeah. I've told this story before and I'll, I'll tell it again because it's very apropos for this moment. The first rain lamp I found was beautiful. It's perfect. It was at a thrift store. It was like $8. I picked it up to look at it. And the oil had spilled a little bit. It started to slip. And when I went to catch it, I snapped all the lines. Oh. I just set it back on the shelf and kind of slinked away. Walk away. away. <laughs> sorry. Sorry about that. I couldn't believe it. I, if I would have let it drop, it probably would have been better off. I tried to catch it and then went all the lines. Oh, all right. Let's, get, let's talk about your scores and duds. But I wanted to show something else. So I'm watching Dustin's videos. And this Ma Maori piece is just amazing one of the best i have ever seen and i said please tell me you have this and please tell me it's not worth a lot he goes oh i did i i saw that it was worth a lot so to demonstrate how big it is here you are holding it and even better so uh if you wouldn't mind what would you pay for this and what'd you sell it for um you know i grouped this together with a whole bunch of other tribal stuff so like they had a bunch of stuff from like papua new guinea africa and then they also had stuff from new zealand so i got few things from New Zealand and this was just one of them and I think I don't even remember it was somewhere around like 150 for like everything it was not it was not a lot of money really um but again like people just you know a lot of times it's big it's bulky they just want to like sell it so if you're willing to buy it in bulk you can get pretty good deals on it um I, I 
think it ended up selling for like a thousand dollars or something to someone in Canada. Ship that big monster. <laughs> and it, that wasn't even so bad. I mean, it wasn't. It's not super breakable, so it's easy to ship. Um, you know, and yeah, yeah, it wasn't too bad actually. I'm thinking of dimensional, but it's so thin. Yeah, it's super thin, so you can really you can really pack it pretty easily. Yeah. And this is something I want everyone to look at because it's kind of cool. I've never seen anything like this. And uh, this is your website, dingoscollection.com. And what's cool is, okay, here's all your eBay listings. And then, uh, so here they are, do, to do, to do. And then you click the shop Etsy and then it just changes to the Etsy listings. Yeah. Now, did yeah. you do all that? Are you that, are you a good programming nerd? Oh. I am not a programmer at all. Like this was literally just to have a place for people to go and see all of my eBay, all of my Etsy. And it's really easy just to say dingoscollections.com as opposed to giving like an eBay link or something. People can remember that. Um, but this is like, it's actually really cool. And it's something that everybody can do. And I think if I'm not mistaken, this is an extension on, oh no, this is, a, okay. So this is a Wix, it's Wix. If you just get a Wix website, they have templates and stuff. And then you can actually get an extension that just puts all of your listings right on a Wix site. So it's all right there. And then the minute somebody clicks on one of those, it takes them directly to your eBay listing so they can just buy whatever they're seeing on there, which is super helpful. I was scared to click on it because I thought that meant I was actually buying it. <laughs> <laughs> click on whatever you want. <laughs> so this is awesome. So yeah, Debbie, we got to look into this and I think that'd be a good uh, a, a good like lesson for the Secret Beach, how to build one of these. I, I think it's very cool. Exactly what I was thinking. Yes. All right, we uh, we decided to start with the duds a couple months ago because might as well build up to the best. And why is this hundred dollar sale a dud? Because I pay I pay a lot for my stuff. Like this, I think I paid like seventy dollars for. Oh, it's worth a lot more. Um, it's it's a lime container, and they just don't sell for very much. I loved it. It was very really cool. Like the the body of it is all bone, so it's I mean it's it's cool. And some of them have like all etched and carved bone detailing on them, but they just don't sell for very much. And there's a lot of them available, so that's probably why. Same, same problem here, pay too much? Problem. And that's like, it was so expensive to ship it. I do all, you know, that one, $22 to ship. Yeah, so it wasn't, it wasn't worth it at the end of that. I think I paid like 50 for that. So I, I probably break even on that if I was lucky. Maybe even lost a little bit on it. So all right, that. but it's good, you know, it, it, that's why we share our duds. Like, look, we're all good at what we do, but we all still make mistakes. So that's why we share them. And I get a lot of compliments for sharing the duds because everyone loves to share their successes. Right. But, but the duds show that we're human. And we like, I make mistakes on CD still, and that's my jam. <laughs> but uh, you learn from them. And I, I find you learn more from your mistakes than your, than your successes. Very true. Okay, so I've taught a lot of webinars in both the Secret Beach and to everybody at large. And this first thing I want to share is something I teach. And dang, you found an awesome one. Yep, DVD VCR combo, six hundred dollars. Oh my gosh! I mean, that was like I got that at an estate sale, and I'm like, how much do you want for that? She's like, mm, five dollars. I paid like nothing for it because I guess people just think you don't need a. ECR anymore, but and new in the box. It wasn't even opened, completely sealed. So I just was. I mean, that was like, and this is so top of the line, 1080p up conversion. I mean, it it, it this was at the end because they don't make this stuff anymore. It was at the end, but this had all the bells and whistles. Hmm. I mean, I yeah. I mean, it was just like I don't I don't know so much about these actually. Unfortunately, it's just like one of those things that I'm like, it's new. In the box, there's an item number that's easily <laughs> identifiable. I can look that up. Um, but I guess you can transfer. I don't know how it works. You can transfer VHS to DVD on something like yep. this. So that's, I guess, people people like that. So. And then from my, from my mom and dad, uh, which I know anyway, but they tend to find a lot of them cheap. TV mm -hmm. TV VCR combos sell so fast. It's now, if you get the big ones, they're too hard to ship like a 13 incher because they're not made anymore and people yeah. still love them and so if you see them because my mom and dad pick them up for like five dollars no more than five dollars and they're always selling them for like 80 90 100 bucks it's crazy i got to ask in your photo is that the tri the those three part little board yeah. uh, report boards type things yeah. yeah it's basically just like a, like what you would do, use in school to do a yeah that's what I use too. And I'm like, that just looks so nice. And it's so, it's, you know, you give it the 99 cent store, Dollar Tree. Yeah, yeah exactly. 
All right, tell us about uh, this mask here. Okay, this thing is like, it's super cool. It's all made out of pottery and it's like Northwest Coast, sort of like a spirit mask. And this thing I had seen six times at a flea market. And I'm just like, ah, do I want that? Do I want that? It's amazing. Do I want it? But he, he had two of them and he wanted um, $100 for both. So they were $50 each. And I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know. I literally passed up on them over and over again. Finally, I'm like, I'm just going to get them because I love them. Obviously, I keep coming back to them. And uh, I put them up. And a week later, they ended up selling both of them for um, quite a bit of money. I think, I think I took an offer on those, actually. So I think those sold for 500 each. I would be afraid to ship those that those butterflies would break off. I, I was super careful for sure. Like I put bubble wrap and paper around each one. So I made sure that they, they got there in good condition. That's a little creepy for me, her eyes, but I love the butterflies. <laughs> right? Like they're kind of like, hmm, kind of scary looking. Yeah, it's interesting. Oops, I wanted to go to this one first. Pretend you didn't see that. Okay. <laughs> see what? <laughs> Oh, the Lalik bird. So uh, this one, I think I paid $150 for this. This was at an estate sale. Um, and it didn't sell for seven. I think it sold for five fifty. dollars So it still did really well for $150. But it was huge. I mean, this thing is like, I don't know if you can see it. It's like, there, there's your hand. Yeah. Yeah. And it's in really, really, it was in perfect condition. There was no, you know. Maybe the rare time when I'm not mad at hands in there to demonstrate really how big it is. Yeah. I, know. I will do it sometimes for that because this company makes tons of different sizes of things. So you're not going to be able to see unless you want to put like a soda can. I've seen people do that. But I don't, you know, I'll do one picture with a hand so you can kind of get an idea of the size. I think I like the hand better than the Coke can because I always think I should. I do too. Like I don't, I don't mind the hand in a picture every now and then. Yeah. And and when you do these uh, glass things that are mostly see through or a little like uh, you know cloudy like this, on black is the only way to go. It really makes them stand out. People try and take glass stuff on white. No way. Black is even though eBay they they all want white, but when you're doing glass and smoky glass and clear glass, black is the only way to go. There's no way you can see glass on white. It's nearly impossible. I know. I always ask them. We go to these events. They're like, yeah, white, white, white. And Google says white. And they were showing us how to do the removal of the background. I go, how are you going to do a pair of white jeans? How? Yeah. Impossible. Yeah. Yeah. impossible. No way. All right. We'll end on your big dog here. Uh, whoa. So this is a, it's a Lundberg lamp. Like it's, it's all made out of glass. So the base is glass. The shade is glass. And on this one, I did keep the shade with it. Um, but this company kind of makes things like Tiffany used to make things way back in the day where it's all, you know, very Art Nouveau style, but, uh, this company still makes these actually. So you can go on their website and buy them. Everything is one of a kind, but they're super, super expensive. So they really don't lose value. If you were to buy one brand new, you could probably sell it, you know, 10 years later for the same price, maybe a little bit more, um, just cause they're so rare. Uh, and I got this at an antique shop for $250. Um, and wow, in an antique shop. You would think that they, you know, that would be the last place you would find something. Like I know. That. And, you know, I actually got, I got a lot of footage at this antique shop. And I'm thinking of doing a video on art glass because I bought like two of these actually there and a bunch of other stuff that was art glass. Um, and, yeah, like this, this is a cool thing I think people would like. Um, these Mary things. says you stole it for that price. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. It was a good price for those for sure. So do you get a lot of returns? Because I mean, when you're selling more expensive things, I think sometimes that turns a lot of us off. Like, oh, if I sell that for that much and then I have to, you know, they want a refund. Yeah. So do you get a lot of returns? You know, I don't. I get I get maybe on a bad month, I'll get maybe four or five, which isn't terrible. I, I sell probably 100 to 150 things a month. So okay. to get, you know, three to five is not terrible. And that's usually on a bad month. There's some months I don't get any, but usually, yeah, I'll get like one or two. And then you just probably relist it, resell it anyway. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. There's always somebody, most of the time people get it and they're like, oh, it doesn't work in the space. There's a lot of stuff people use for decoration and it's a little frustrating, but it's, you know, it's the cost of doing business. So Good it back, and then we you just like that attitude. Huh? <laughs> yeah, you have to. All right. Here's my last question. Did you sell the uh, bank vault wheel? Yes, I did. And I don't even remember how much it was. It was some crazy amount. I want to say it was like $600 or something. It might have been $400 and I was asking six. I can't remember, but it was like, it was a lot. Yeah. So, so when, when you see, when you see his videos, you know, 
you see a lot of the same stuff from me because we all kind of work in our zone. And then you'll see these odd things from time to time. But it really opens your eyes <clears throat> to so much else that's out there that, you know, once you've conquered what you know, start work. I mean, that's why I teach classes, why I have the secret peach, that's why I do webinars, because you conquer what you know, but then you're already standing there. So now I know you're looking for tiki mugs. Now you've seen me selling for 600. I was like texting my brother. I'm like, he's watching. I'm like, did you see the tiki mug? People are for tiki mug. <laughs> yeah, because you're, I mean, there are so many tiki bars in the Bay Area current, and I can even give you a heads up when they're dropping brand new mugs. They're always limited edition, and then they're instantly worth double and triple what they're going for. So you could go have a drink, and then basically you made money having a cocktail. That's crazy. I, I could be amazing on that. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah because, because Last Rites has dropped uh, two or three that were instant classics that went up in price immediately. And you're right there. You live there. You're next door. Yeah. Like, I'll just walk down and have a drink. Can you get us each one, too, when you go? <laughs> <laughs> crazy. I had no idea. So uh, thank everybody for tuning in today. Those of you who watched my video earlier, thank you very much. If you haven't seen it, check it out about the big eBay to-do. And again, if, you, uh, if you're if you unsure of what's happening in our country in terms of race and, 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 you know, if you are of white skin, you don't know what it's like to go through life with uh, black skin. And John was very uh, upfront and talking about raising kids and things. I don't have any children. So things I never thought of. So please watch that. Love to hear your feedback. Love to hear your feedback on Dustin. And please go watch his video. Subscribe. I got, I, I really, doing this a long time. Uh, really quick, you become one of my favorite YouTube channels. And it's, it's that rare channel that I'm, I can't, when's the next one? Like, I'm ready. Like, when's your next video already? I've seen them all. <laughs> Yeah, we can't wait to meet you in person because I'm close to Jason. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys so much for having me on. This was so much fun. I really, really enjoyed this. And uh, shout out to your brother. Uh, shoot, I had his name. What's your brother's name? Tyler. Tyler, because you always say your brother. You only said his name like two or three times. I know. I know. And uh, yeah, so shout out to him. And, and yes, when we can move about the country, my wife and I do end up in the Bay Area once or twice a year. So we'll definitely come on by and uh, we'll do some flea market. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> so thank you, everybody. Uh, tune in on Sunday for Mom and I. So I'm past your expiration date. So we can talk. Uh, we can celebrate dads and Nadine's uh, YouTube channel, Nalo. Uh, tune in tomorrow. I'm going to be the fill in co host about something I really have no idea about, but I'm going to list on Depop tonight. So, so Nadine can critique my listings because I had an idea. So I was going to drop the knowledge somewhere else, but I'll drop it tomorrow at uh, noon uh, East Coast, 9 a.m. West Coast. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. Stay safe. Keep listening. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.